It's time for my political spotlight. Uh, and today it's Tory MP Brendan Clark Smith. Now, Brendan first got elected back in 2019, winning a very healthy majority of over 14,000 in the constituency of uh, Bassett Law. Now, the Tory MP, who was born in Nottingham, grew up on a council estate in Clifton and became a local councillor for the area. Brendan then went on to become a teacher, where he taught in the UK, Norway, Romania, and also became the head of international school. He's known to be a big Boris supporter. And and said that the parliamentary witch hunt of the former Prime Minister could put a banana republic to shame. I'm de delighted to say that Conservative MP Brendan Clark Smith joins me now. Brendan, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, first of all, I've got to get straight into it. How do you feel about the news with regard to Boris Johnson? Uh, he has resigned for, as an MP. I'm very, very sad to see him go. Uh, very angry, of course, as I'm sure many of the people who voted for us are as well. I thought he did a tremendous job as Prime Minister. Of course, uh, I'm not going to go through cliches about getting Brexit done and everything else, but this is a man who's an absolute giant, not just in British politics, but around the world. And it's somebody who delivered something which, uh, sadly, Parliament couldn't do between 2015 and 17, and that was respect the referendum result. So I do hope the legacy that is left behind is is not going to be wasted. But uh, certainly as a as a colleague, you know, I'm very, very disappointed to see him go, and especially in the manner that he has. Yeah. I mean, N Nigel Adams has also uh, decided to uh, get out of politics in, in his respect, as well as an MP. What, what, do you think this could potentially become a kind of domino effect with other politicians deciding they're not liking the look of how politics is shaping up? Well, I was Nigel's PPS for six months, so uh, working working under him was absolutely fantastic. He's a really great minister at what he did. He's a brilliant mentor and he's a good friend as well. And the thing is with Nigel, is never about him personally. It was always about the bigger picture and working towards that. So Nigel's a very good man. I think you need more people like that in politics. And it's very sad to see him go. And I'd say the same about Nadine Doris. You know, it, really what we're trying to push to people, uh, they're both working class people who have done very well for themselves, both dying the wall conservatives and uh, making it to the very top, of course. And it's that kind of story, that kind of success that inspired a lot of people to vote for us. So when we see these people leaving Parliament, it's, it's not a great sign for us because these are people that we need. These are people we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. So seeing this now, does that put you off? Because why did you initially get into politics? Well, I think I looked at my local community and I looked at what made it better. My, my parents bought their own home. As I said, I, I come from what used to be the biggest council estate in, in Europe at the time when it was built there. And I was very black and white, I suppose, about uh, giving people more choices in life, uh, the state backing off, really. And I think Margaret Thatcher, what she achieved there, uh, you know, she actually changed the lives of a lot of people and improved this country for the better. And then since then, we've obviously carried on with that. I've always been a conservative. It's 25 years now and in very similar circumstances I was elected in the Red Wall and uh, a lot of people across the country for the very first time voted Conservative and mm. Boris Johnson was a, a huge part of that really and uh, yeah they feel obviously very disappointed first of all with what happened with the referendum result that we needed Boris to come in really and get that majority to force it through mm. Parliament as it is and then once again we now see in a situation where people elect their own MPs you know the people are sovereign for me. Uh, it should be the people who decide who their MPs are. We shouldn't be uh, deciding it between ourselves in Westminster. I think it's mm. a very unhealthy mm. situation where MPs are deciding on the fate of other MPs. Yeah, I mean, looking at it as well, to me, it looks like the, the Tory party has squandered their majority. The infighting has put us, me, the general public, watching this whole f ridiculous thing farce uh, fall apart. Do you think there's any hope for the, the Conservative Party now? I think there is, and I still think there's time. There's 18 months to go. I think the main thing is that we, we really need to focus on on that goal in the general election and getting a Conservative majority government again, because if we don't, the alternative is is unthinkable, really. We've seen what uh, Labour are planning to do. In fact, you know, what they plan to do, they they U-turn on five minutes later and nobody's actually sure what they, they really stand for. But I don't think it's enough simply to say that it'll actually be the worst if we have a Labour government. We need to actually give people a reason to vote for us as well, and especially those people who voted for us for the 
first time in 2019, we need to hold on to those. So we've got 18 months to go. We've got to get our skates on and we've really got to deliver. And of course, a Boris gang, I mean, in my view, it did look like a witch hunt. Um, it was just a spectacle, really. Anybody watching from the outside, even if you didn't like him, would have seen this as, I mean, it was just like constant, constant party gate. We had wallpaper gate, animal gate, or anything they could get him down for, they did. Do you think he'll return to politics after put, being put through all of that? Well, I've said exactly the same thing as some say it's all about Partygate. It's not really. Oh, the establishment have been out to get Boris Johnson a very long time. As you said, if it wasn't that, it was wallpaper or it's something else or they'll, they'll drag up any excuse, really. And people really, a lot of them just detested Boris Johnson because he actually uh, took away from them what they, they thought was their God-given right to govern the country however they thought, uh, regardless of what the will of the people actually was. And they were out to get him, of course, any opportunity that was there they seized on. But of course, Boris Johnson, he's shown uh, over his career, of course, he is the, the king of comebacks, the king of uh, reinventing yeah. himself, really. And uh, I'm sure it's not the last of Boris Johnson, put it this way. And do you reckon there was a bit more to it than that as well? Not just getting rid of him, but more of a Remainer plot, some coup that are to get us back into the EU? Well, that, that does worry me, certainly. I mean, when you you certainly see Michelle Barnier on television saying, mm -hmm. oh, we're welcome to rejoin, and you look at some of the comments that are made by the opposition, you hear about coalitions, you hear about votes at 16 and giving the right to vote in general elections to EU citizens, mm -hmm. and you worry, really, is this the last time we're going to see a Conservative majority government? Are we going to get a system of PR? Are we going to get these endless coalitions and backroom deals all the time and this is what's at stake and this yeah. is why really we've got to fight back against these people now Nana. If we would do Brendan, Brendan Clark-Smith thank you so much for joining me really good that is of course Brendan Clark-Smith.